All right, I'm here with uh, Curtis V. Hill, and uh, this is play breakdown number one of the season. Um, we'll be doing this throughout the season. Um, we'll send out a play um, with a you make the call, talk about positioning, we'll talk about the call selection, uh, various things, depending on what we, we go through throughout the season. But um, in this play particular, um, we had a uh, 13 total responses, um, a couple coaches in there. So that's great. Um, thanks, uh, coaches, for participating. Um, we definitely want to, as the season goes on, we want to elevate that number um, and, and get full participation. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show the results of, of our breakdown. And there you go. As you can see, lead, uh, we talked, we asked the question, you know, how's the leads positioning? One to four, one being needs to improve, uh, four is in good positioning. And, uh, you know, so, th so the poll shows that uh, you all have lead is good positioning. Um, same as center, a couple, uh, a couple of poor positionings um, to good positionings. And then trail positionings kind of um, all over the place. Um, we have some believe that uh, uh, the trail is in, in poor position, but also, uh, we have some that were in good position. So um, as far as the judgment on this play, as you can see, 76.9% um, of you said that this is an offensive foul. 15% uh, uh, said defensive foul. And then the other 7% said this is a no call. Um, and then when we talked about whose primary coverage, I know initially I asked whose primary area, coverage area, um, let's not get the area and primary coverage confused, um, you know, on drives to the basket, we want lead to take those plays, um, especially once it's below the free throw line, even though it is on the C side of the lane, understand that that defender, that secondary defender always comes from, or doesn't always, but does come from that, uh, from that lead primary. So we wanted to, to make mention that, you know, it is a primary coverage, not a con coverage area so uh with that let's uh let's break the play down and uh, i'll let curtis uh i'll hand it over to curtis and he can uh, go through the breakdown with you all right folks um uh, just a, a quick note really quickly hopefully that we can get a little bit more participation in these i think it's a great learning tool for everyone to kind of break down a play, dissect it a little more, and start getting more engaged on, on what we're actually trying to accomplish for this year. Uh, but getting into this play, we always want to look at position of our crew. Um, obviously, our first snapshot right now that we have is our trail official coming up from the backcourt to the front court. Um, I don't know what the results were on those aspects of it, but as a snapshot in itself right now, if you're looking at the play, we want to see this uh, trail official a little bit more engaged. This is a competitive matchup probably one and one, which means one step to the left, one step back, or two and two, a little bit more uh, engaged on that play. As this play moves away from our trail, and you'll see uh, the ball handler dribble and take a diagonal direction towards our center official. Real I quick, sure our... and I hate to interrupt you on this, but yeah. will you just break down the one and one, two and two? Whereabouts were, would you like this official? So at, at this point in time, this official should be probably a step behind the half court line. So you see the division line uh, right where your cursor is at, Nate. From that point, one step back, just so you're able to be engaged to see through the players. So when we talk about one and one or two and two, that's going to be one step to our left um, and one step back. So probably right there, the, your guideline will be that volleyball line. There's a volleyball line that's on there. That's really a guideline for you to be able to say, hey, that's a little bit too deep on the floor, but that's a pretty good guideline for you to stay on the floor, stay engaged on the play, one step to the left, one step back, or two steps to the left or two steps back as well. So that's the whole concept of, of one and one or two and two. The whole idea is to be able to see through the defender and the ball handler. Got it. Thanks. Okay, as this play develops again, this play moves away from our trail official and into the lap of our center. 
just a quick note, as this play does move away from you from our trail, we still want to stay engaged in the play. That does not mean taking more steps onto the floor. That means staying engaged on the play and dropping to our 28 foot line, sideline oriented to be able to see the uh, action, uh, action area at the basket as it develops. To, uh, taking uh, our position to our center official right now, our center position is, uh, our center official is in good position right now. Um, I would like to see them a little bit more engaged, kind of the body language right now shows that maybe potentially we're not prepared for uh, multiple defenders on this play. But as this play develops, um, before any type of contact for a secondary defender, you're going to see two defenders um, in the play before we get to the paint, and that's going to be white number 22 and white number two. Those two players are the responsibility of our center official. What we want to make sure is that any swipe downs that do occur by these two defenders are officiated by our center. So if there's any illegal contact to the arm, we're able to see that play. So you see a left arm swipe down uh, by number 22. Now you'll see a right hand swipe down by number two. Uh, not too engaged, but we want to make sure that we're officiating those, those players because that is our area of responsibility. Also for our center official, as this play develops, I want to see our, our official take one step uh, with her left foot onto the floor. That's able to officiate number two uh, for white. And also, once we're able to get off those two defenders, we're able to officiate the secondary defender in the lane. And that allows us to see any type of lateral movement, a movement from our left to our right, right to our left. Uh, that gives us a little bit more probability of getting this play correct. Right. You, so, uh, yeah, you mentioned swipes, but, you know, also be aware that we're looking for trips, holds, pushes, uh, anything of that sort uh, on this type of play. Absolutely. I um, mean, these are plays that we should discuss in, in our pregame um, as it relates to any passing crash. This is a, a pretty typical passing crash right here. But we want to make sure that we're still engaged with our primary defenders with number two uh, of white, number 22 of white. Um, a lot of the times you're going to have a swipe down. You may have a trip with a foot uh, or you may have a, a slight shove to the back of our bar, ball handler. And we want to make sure we're fully engaged on that play. And if we're officiating a play as it should, as a center official, um, we're, we're trusting our, or excuse me, our lead official to officiate that secondary defender. So just be aware of those things as, it, as the play develops and there is a dribble drive. Trust our system. Trust your areas of responsibility as it relates to the defenders in your area and allow our, our other officials to you know, take onus and responsibility and where they're officiating and have trust in the system. All right. And Curtis, I, I mean, and I, and as we watch this play, we don't I don't doubt that our center official has. watched the secondary defender, they've picked up the secondary defender and and has knowledge on this play but by having that knowledge we sacrifice a potential having the knowledge on 22 and 2 you know so that's why it is important to really be disciplined in your primary and and understand who your defenders are in your primary who you need to pick up who you should be officiating um yes our does our center probably have a great look at this secondary defender absolutely but again at the cost of potentially having a foul on 22 and two, and then not being able to pick that foul up. I think the biggest thing that we need to be aware of uh, fellow officials is foundation of officiating. So yes, number 22, number two, there's not a competitive engaged matchup on those, but just trusting the system and allowing that play to develop. There's 22, there's number two white. And now our center official, I have no doubt was able to see that play. But now we have whistle discipline. Whistle discipline comes with cadence and processing the play and knowing our areas of responsibility. Um, we see the play on that, and you're going to see a double whistle. On that particular play, if we're processing everything from our foundation, from our primary defenders over to our secondary, we're allowing that play to develop to give our lead official uh, the first opportunity to have a decision on that play. And if we do that, our whistle is delayed. We're processing the play. We're allowing a lead to either have a whistle or not have a whistle. Um, and from there, then we can make a decision whether or not we want to uh, have a, a block or a, or a player control foul on this play. Great. All right, let's uh, move on to the lead. As our uh, lead official, uh, very difficult to see the initial starting position of our lead as it relates to the backcourt to the frontcourt. 
Uh, but right here, as this ball enters the painted area, <clears throat> you'll see the eyes of our lead official officiating only one play, and that's our secondary defender, and that is her area of responsibility. Um, on this particular play, we want to make sure that we're pinched down, we're engaged, we're not leaning, we're able to take a step to our left, and right now our lead official is able to process the entire play um, and have a, a, a decision on it that, in my opinion, is potentially would be correct. What we need to be aware of this is, as we're officiating these plays, where does our defender come from? Okay, we want to make sure that that's the biggest piece to this puzzle. Our defender comes from our lead's responsibility. So that's our initial starting position there as our defender, white. We identify who's going to hurt us coming out of our area of responsibility. Defender is legal. We have a two and through, meaning our offensive player goes to the body and through the space of our defender. And now we have a whistle from our center and then processed by our lead official as well. So again, uh, great positioning by our lead. I believe she processed the, processes the play. Uh, is going to have a decision. Not sure what it's going to be. But the biggest learning tool for this one is our outside official allowing our lead official to have a decision on it and knowing our areas of responsibility. So uh, lead official, great job on this play. The only thing I'll say right now is our center just process a little bit further uh, to allow our lead official to have that. Great. Um, the other piece to this real quick, Nate, I just want to uh, reiterate on this. This is a multi-layer play. Uh, it is a good play, a good learning tool, and why it's very important for each official to stay engaged, especially our trail official. If you take it back, Nate, just a couple of frames, um, you'll see our secondary defender slide over and is legal, but you also see number 24. Uh, what we got to keep in mind, potentially, if the a ball handler at that point who passes it slips, meaning there is uh, uh, minor contact on the play and there is no whistle on it, we still have to be aware of number 24 white for a swipe down, uh, hit on the arm, hit on the head, body contact, whatever the case may be. And the best look on this play is going to be our trail. So we want to make sure we trust our system. We're getting in good position. We're processing plays. We understand where our defenders are coming from. And I think we're we're in good shape on this play. So, Nate, I think a, a great play to start the season. Um, it allows us to kind of get that back to our foundation. Again, when we look at plays, we want to look at positioning first and foremost, where the where the defenders are coming from, where the whistles are coming from. Uh, I think we'll be in good shape throughout the year. Awesome. Um, great breakdown. And like Curtis said, you know, um, let's stick to the fundamentals. Um, we'll continue to, to work uh, the system and and really just start to uh, develop and, and learn. And so um, with that, uh, we thank you um, and looking forward to the next play to break down with you.